here on the set at Walt Disney Productions, renowned producer of The Island at the Top of the World, Winston Hibbler. When the original motion picture idea was researched, we discovered it was entirely credible that an ancient Viking colony could exist today in the far Arctic. The fact is, nearly 10 centuries ago, Eric the Red set out for Greenland, leading 500 Vikings in 25 ships, but only 14 got through. It was a heroic journey. The Norsemen were remarkable sailors. But the moods of the freezing North Atlantic were fierce, and survival itself was something of a miracle. What happened to the missing 11 ships? Were they swallowed by the angry sea? Quite probably. But far more intriguing is the view they were driven off course and carried to safety beyond Land's End, where the Vikings could have settled and survived on a volcanically heated, life-supporting mystic island. And that was our inspiration to go ahead. Now we had to visualize a complete Viking culture, isolated from the rest of the world for a thousand years. What would its social structure be like? Clothing, weapons, tools, everything. We went to artists like Peter Ellenshaw and Alan Maley, and others who had already won Academy Awards for their work on Disney films. They provided the visual concepts, while the writer and the director tackled the screenplay. The script was broken down into a storyboard with a sketch for every shot in the movie, providing a ready reference for the technical crew, and especially for those super magicians, the special effects men. We dated our story before Perry achieved the North Pole, which opened up the greatest possibilities for Arctic exploration. On location in Greenland, we recreated wildlife's first view of man. The only way to reach the pole in 1908 would have been by air. This meant designing a first-of-its-kind dirigible. Our concept was called the Hyperion. It was an airship realistic for its time, but not super real. No need to be alarmed, Sir Anthony. Look, I am in full command. There's no need to overdo it. You may have already recognized the distinctive music of Maurice Jarre, known for films such as Lawrence of Arabia, Dr. Zhivago, and Ryan's Daughter. He called upon some ancient Nordic instruments and got some of the weirdest sounds you've ever heard. the high adventure in the island at the top of the world was dreamed up with dramatic license in the interest of making an entertaining motion picture for the whole family to enjoy together. Now we feel it was worth the three years we put into it. And we believe that audiences will find it to be one of the most exciting adventures ever to come to the screen. for the invaders.
running out. 